Welcome to Salento with Love and a new series called Walk Through Salento. But what a better way to start 2021 and also starting the series of Walking Through Salento in the town that I heard so many stories every time I sit with my parents to have dinner or lunch and they're both in their 80s they were both born in this little town here in Salento I hear so many beautiful stories in the background the sound of people working it's very early in the morning my morning is just about to start I'd like to show you why Salento is the place to be this long strip of tongue of land in the south of Italy representing one of the wealthiest and richest part of architecture here in the whole of the Italian peninsula so Let's come on the journey with me and I'll show you why Salento. So another why Salento. It's not going to cut me up, is it? It's like one of those Italian movies. But while in London, I used to take a half a day off to go and get my hair sorted. So now we started the morning. First thing in the morning, 8.30, get your hair sorted out, and then you're ready to start your day here in Salento. Let's see if we make some magic. I do need some magic done. Yeah. So we're done. Here we are, ready to go. Let's go back out there. Grazie Dario. If you ever visit Salento, you got an air cut on me. The very rich architecture that can be found in Puglia or in Salento is not the only reason why thousands and millions of people have decided to visit or even relocate in this beautiful part of Italy. Also, landmarks such as the Bergside Lake here just outside the beautiful city of Otranto are one of the reasons why many people visit Salento. of tradition one of those traditions it's producing cheese and the landscape in the background you can just imagine what this beautiful animals are getting fed on natural organic grass with the most majestic background in the distance over there we can just see the mountains of Albania just in the background in the very well-known channel of Otranto With the soil being so fertile and also the land being totally flat, no doubt why the Ottoman Empire and the Turks really wanted to conquer this part of Italy. And because of that reason, they needed to protect themselves, building castles and big towers all around the coastline, which we can now see and benefit from it, from this beautiful history and heritage that was left behind centuries ago. Buzzing in the summer with restaurants and bars and souvenir stores, some of these beautiful cities, in the winter they become the perfect retreat just quiet and these blue skies wrapping us around with an incredible amount of beautiful architecture to make our days so beautiful as we discover the land of Salento.
1480, the day 28th of July, more than 130 ships arrived on the horizon. They were part of the Ottoman Empire. They were here to conquer the city. It took them about two weeks to break down the walls and get into this beautiful city. Over 800 people were executed. They didn't want to convert to Islam. And as a result of that, they were executed. We now have beautiful example of that in this beautiful church. But also the mosaic in this church, it's a witness that this land was not a Christian. It was pagan and it was in that period of transition between being pagan and becoming Christian. All of this here in Salento. Castles can be found all over Salento, built during the 14th, 15th century, mainly by the Spanish, just like this wonderful example behind me of a castle from the Aragonese period. And they were really the rocker fort of Salento, protecting not just seaside cities, but also inland. So beautiful castles like this, but this is a very large one, can be found all over the territory of Salento in the three provinces of Lecce, Brindisi and Taranto. So what makes of Salento the place to be? Could it be the weather? We're at the beginning of January and I'm sweating. Could it be the food? Could it be the geographical position attracting some of the most extraordinary energies in the world? Yes, surrounded by three seas. Well, many could be the reasons why Puglia and Salento, this very large part of Puglia, have become some of the most visited parts of Italy in the last 10 years. geographically very well positioned. Now, not many regions in Italy have two international airports. Puglia has two, Bari and Brindisi. So you can fly in from more or less anywhere in the world. You may have a stopover in Milan or Rome and then flying into this extraordinary region as Puglia. And yes, the history of Salento, another reason why Salento is the place to visit. We're going from historic to prehistoric, just like 
this archaeological site that we are visiting at the moment. The full video about L'Abbazia delle Cento Porte or the Abbey of a Hundred Doors can be found on our YouTube channel. Just click on the link below to see the full video about this extraordinary archaeological site that you should definitely visit if you come to Salento. And then you hop around from one town to another, over 140 towns, with the main towns being Taranto, Brindisi, Lecce, right down in the south, making Salentum, this part of a region of Puglia. But when you see such a beautiful and rich architecture, look at these balconies. Look at those doors and windows. Look at the size of this door. And look at that square. Isn't it amazing to think that there was so much wealth? You just have to walk down this street here to see palazzo after palazzo to understand how rich Salento was. The source of wealth? The trees behind me. Yes olive oil. This was like the crude oil of the days of the 16th, 17th century. Thanks to olive oil they were litting up all the beautiful cities around Northern Europe. And did you know that majority of that olive oil was coming from Salento? And did you know that what made this oil really special was the fact that it was smokeless? Incredible! That was the source of wealth of Salento and now it's left us with a legacy which is the incredible architecture. So, are you wondering what generated all the revenue that allowed Salento and Puglia to become one of the most wealthiest region in Italy in the 16th century? It was gold, but not the type of gold that you dig out from the ground. No, it was gold that was produced from these olives here. Olive oil. Yes, olive oil, which he was then produced and shipped all over the world to create light. Yes, it was the crude oil of the 15th, 16th, 17th century, 18th century before electricity was invented. This and many other reason it's why Salento had all the whys already back in them days. Full video on our YouTube channel. Walking through the towns of Salento, you're never short of surprises. You just need to turn around the corner and wow, look, another castle. we like to live here in Salento. Well, after all, that's the Dolce Vita. Really, when it comes to Italy, why the whole world wants to come and visit Italy? 
Well, isn't it true that over 70% of the art that can be found all over the world is actually found in this country? And Puglia, with such an incredible and rich background and heritage, it's probably one of those places that stores a lot of it. So as you're wandering any of the 140 towns that make part of this region, you're never short of finding somewhere that really is going to take you completely by storm. So if you're dreaming of La Dolce Vita, Salento gives you exactly that. Through this series we will explore every time a different town that makes more than 140 towns that can be found in these three provinces of Lecce, Brindisi and Taranto. And with so much to see and explore, with so much beauty, well, I can guarantee you we're never going to be left or we're never going to be short of anything to show you. Well, remember, we're talking about why Salento and we are walking through Salento in this series. So every time we come across incredible things like this in any of the towns that we're going to explore, we're going to make sure that we go in and we'll explore it together. you may ask yourself while I visit Salento or if I have a property in Salento would I find good quality grocery stores and supermarkets and how easy it is the answer is yes look at the quality of the supermarkets here in Salento so many and every town has supermarkets and stores that allow you to have a very comfortable stay while here in Puglia So may the walk through Salento begun. Large courtyards, beautiful squares, churches, castles, seaside towns, everything you need to live the Dolce Vita here in Italy. We have ended up in one of my favourite spots to end this video, Palazzo Zucala. Just below you can see the link to a series of videos that I'm doing here in this building that took my heart. Now the same thing could happen to you. Walking through Salento, remember 140 towns and more in the three provinces, you may see something that is going to make your heart stop. And that's exactly what we intend to do. Remember, two international airports. Which ones? Yes, Bari. B-A-R-I and Brindisi. I'm not going to spell that one out, but B-R-I-N-D-I-S-I. -I. Brindisi. Yes, well, I may have missed something, but doesn't matter. Two international airports in one region of Italy. Now, how many regions in Italy have two international airports? Hmm, I'm thinking. Hmm, maybe, but I can't remember of any. But, isn't it amazing that you can land here and discover this extraordinary land. Remember one of the key factors? It's flat. It's called the Table of Italy. That allows you to cross from one coastline to the other coastline. That allows you to have a bicycle that you can almost do the whole of the land on a bike. Isn't that magic? 
and just the province of Lecce, 97 towns that you can go and discover one by one. Even if you did one a week, it would be 97 weeks just to discover the province of Lecce. So much to do. So we're going to walk through Salento with you and please stay tuned for the first town that we'll be choosing in this series and we're going to walk through together and discover, explore and find all of those things that make Italy such a wonderful place to be in the world.